gaming cases. They're fine, right? We have great airflow, tons of new features, and they don't need any more improvement. Well, that's where I would have to disagree. It's true that our PC cases have come a long way since the first days of the computer, but there is one key design element that has been overlooked, and that's the actual principles of airflow. The good news is that we can fix it, but first I want to dive in to a brief history of airflow in PC cases. Cases that were originally made were these big heavy steel frames with virtually no cutouts and any fans that might exist on them were typically internal, like the fan on the CPU heatsink. Um, eventually we started seeing a little bit of some like maybe a fan in the front, uh, front bottom front, like a little 80 millimeter or a little 80 millimeter exhaust fan in the back. But for the most part, it was a closed off case that was designed to kind of seal everything inside and keep it protected. Well, that worked, but as computer parts got more heat intensive, that design had to be changed. It was about around 2003, Antec uh, introduced the Super Land Boy. And this is one of the cases that really tackled airflow using some actual design principles by upping the size of fans from the typical 80 millimeter size to 120 millimeter fans. The idea of using larger fans to pump more airflow through the case had not been a huge factor at the moment and that Land Boy did a good job of introducing that. Um, so then as we're moving towards the 2000s, we get about the mid 2000s, bottom mount PSU start happening. And what was the biggest reason for doing this? Well, the bottom mount PSU helped uh, get a big, huge block of obstruction for fans that could be placed in the back and the top of the case so that you would have better airflow, better ways to exhaust heat out of the case instead of just leaving it all closed in and trapped. So we're moving along well, and we're seeing a lot of improvements. Cases are also adding more fans to them. And then Fractal Design comes around and does something really notable. They may not have been the absolute first one that did it, but their Fractal de this Design Define R2 case was one of the most remembered cases for having extremely good cable management. And one of the things that became very obvious is, is that if you have obstructions inside your case, that will obstruct airflow as well. So getting cable management on the back panel so that all those cables are as much out of the way as possible was a huge step in the right direction towards airflow. After we get past 2010, you can kind of just see in recent years, we've seen fans increase. We've seen the number of fans increase. We've seen the size of fans increase. We've got 140 millimeter fans. We've got 200 millimeter fans. We'll have cases that have two full 200 millimeter fans in the front. So we've got a lot more focused on airflow. We've gotten a lot of improvements there, but there's still some principles of airflow that quite frankly are gaming cases are missing out on. And to show this, I actually did some research and found some really good quotes in the in the world of heating and ventilation for houses. And so I found this website, it was called Energy Vanguard, and I pulled a couple of quotes from him. The first one is this, another problem is that the sag, and he's talking about the sag in the vent, like the flexible ducts. The sag means that the air doesn't flow in a straight line line that keep keep that in mind straight line as it should in this case it goes up it goes down it gets tired and poops out quickly the rooms don't get as much air as they should now if you've had a case where you've done anything with like air air cooling crossfire or sli or you've had one of those really high-end cards that pump out a lot of heat does it ever feel like the air is well as Vanguard says it, pooping out and it's just building up heat in your case. Keep that in mind. Here's another quote from them. If you take a fan out into your yard on a calm day and turn it on, you'll get its maximum airflow. If you take the same fan and blow the air into a cardboard tube, it has to work against the pressure that builds up in that space. The more you reduce the size of that tube or make it longer or turn the air with, with it, and there's another key right there, turn the air, 
um, the more static pressure builds up and the more that the airflow is reduced. And right along lines of that, with this next quote that I got, the second factor is turbulence. This generally arises when you move air through fittings or when you turn the air. With rigid duct, you turn the air with fittings, but unfortunately that's not always the case with flex duct. So there's turbulence that happens when the air has to turn. Now, one of the biggest, biggest glaring inconsistencies with our cases is you'll see that there's airflow that's coming straight in from the front, and sometimes they'll show some airflow coming from the bottom if they have a bottom-mounted fan in towards the front. And then they'll show this nice gentle swoop of a curve where they show the air coming out from the back fan and from the top fans. But what's not but, but that's not a good illustration of what's really happening. What's happening is, is the air is not only having to come straight into the case, it's going to have to move up a level because typically the front fans are lower than the back exhaust fan. And then if there's an exhaust fan in the top, that air literally has to make a 90 degree turn to go straight up. That causes turbulence, which affects the airflow. So is it worth the trouble to design a case that can work around that? Well, this is what I have done. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you've, you might have seen these videos of the prototype design. Um, this video is to really help solidify the research behind it and the reason why and why it could be beneficial. And I'll explain what I hope to see here soon. But my prototype design fixes a couple, like several of those problems for one, by having the, fan, the angled back panel, the airflow can go straight through the case as much as reasonably possible. And this is awesome because it helps reduce turbulence, which means that the flow can stay consistent. If there's less turbulence, there's less pressure that builds up, the air will continuously exhaust the heat that's coming off of your components. The other reason why I did the angled panel is not only does it help with cable management because you can still access all of your ports and still manage to plug everything in without really any trouble, but there's one real key factor to this as well. When you turn the when you turn the board so that the air is flowing straight up into the graphics card, you've got the full flat surface area of that card restricting airflow, not to mention you have a chimney effect. Any heat that's coming off your card is going straight up through your CPU cooler now. With this design on my prototype, we now have, if you are looking at the graphics card as if you're coming right at it, as if you're the air looking right at it, you are seeing the thinnest and the, the just the thinnest and the least wide section of the card. It's just the end. There is virtually no obstruction and on top of that, you're not getting a chimney effect because now the air is staying parallel to the length of the card exhausting and the air is staying parallel to the CPU cooler and exhausting, which helps with avoiding the chimney effect. So this is why I designed this case this way and test it out. But now we've got to see, is there any merit to my design? Well, we've got testing results. So I tested against the best airflow case I've ever used, and that is my Thermaltake Core V71. I don't have just four fans in it though. I do have two 200 millimeter fans in the front and two 200 millimeter fans in the top. But to in further improve the airflow, because with my Crossfire setup, it still wasn't feeling like this case was handling heat the way I wanted it to, I dropped a 140 millimeter uh, fan in the bottom in front of the power supply and a 140 millimeter exhaust fan in the back. I was trying to avoid a static pressure buildup or a um, the reverse of that where we're kind of creating almost like a vacuum effect. I was trying to keep the flow even as best as possible. And it's worked good, but as you can see in our first testing results, my prototype that only has four fans, two 200s in the front, two 200s in the back, because we don't have nearly as much turbulence and much better flow, temperatures were great. Now granted, the cards are still pushing a heat saturation effect, but that all the other components on my build, things like the CPU, the VRMs, the, the, the NVMe drive on the board, much lower than before, and that heat buildup effect was just not happening, and that was phenomenal. 
Um, I did the test with a single card because I know Crossfire and SLI is a thing that doesn't really exist anymore, even though I personally love it, and it's a great way to show an extreme air cooling heat situation. It's not what most people use. And at first it looks kind of even because when you show the, the prototype case next to my thermal take, the temperatures were, were pretty close. Like barely, there were some wins, some losses, but everything was basically an even, even temperature pull. But then you gotta remember that I have six fans going against four. So then I decided, here's what I need to see. A lot of cases though, the majority of gaming cases, a lot of buyers, a lot of people are not looking for the big 200 millimeter fans. Those are more niche. But a lot of gaming cases will come with two 120 millimeter fans. And a lot of them have three in the front with one exhaust. Does improving the principles of airflow layout work for that? It did. I was able to create just a temporary cardboard panels, mount those two, the two 120 millimeters in the back, the two 120 millimeters in the front. And as you can see, the graphics card, we gained about three degrees on, on temperature that, that was better on that airflow design. The CPU, we actually were still pulling about eight degrees cooler during gaming runs than we were against a traditional case that has three fans in the front and one in the back. Now, I was testing using a 980 Ti, right? Well, a 980 Ti is not a bad card, but it actually is kind of minor compared to the heat producing monsters we have today, like the RTX 3080 Ti or a Radeon 6800 XT. So what does this show? It shows that airflow improvements can actually keep things running significantly cooler and avoid heat saturation in the case. What would I like to see? I would really love to see a case. For instance, I found a couple of good cases. There's like the Lian Li um, 011 Air Series, and it's a dual chamber case that has fans in the front. Well, so, some of the versions do, and it's the Air Mini particular, has fans in the front and a single exhaust. The dual chamber is great because it gets the power supply completely out of the way of the airflow. And if that back panel could just be turned into that angle design with two fans, I would love to see a couple of 140 millimeter fans in the front with two 140 millimeters in the back doing that straight through airflow and with the power supply in that secondary chamber to the side it would just be a perfect case that really wouldn't change the size of cases too much and have phenomenal cooling corsair has their crystal series too that does a similar design with the dual chamber aspect and i would love to see just somebody with a case like that where they did just the straight through design and seeing how that would improve with airflow on our high-end components i do think that it's important to realize too this isn't a design that i'm expecting to see on every case in the world as we could see with the thermal take, there's a point where it's just overkill. And if you're running lower end or mid range graphics cards that, that aren't really heat saturating anyway, and they don't pump out as much heat as some of these big monstrous GPUs that are in the high end cards, you don't, that, yeah, it's true. You don't need this level of design. And at this level of design would probably increase the cost of the case. So I understand that this isn't a design that needs to be for everything, but I would love to see it as a premier high-end case meant for premier high-end components. So don't forget guys, if you like this, if you like the, what you saw today, just like this video, subscribe to my channel and just spread the word. Um, especially if you wanna see more content like this, just spread the word, share it out. And maybe if we're lucky, we could see a company take this design and maybe design a case around it and see if we could get a kind of a new improvement to airflow and a new improvement to our gaming cases. Fingers crossed. Anyway, I'll see you next time.